Hello, everyone. I completed the entire video for the second part for service animals. However, I forgot to turn on the microphone. <laughs> so <laughs> it was a very, very silent video. <laughs> so we're going to correct that today. <laughs> I'm going to do the whole thing over again. <laughs> so <laughs> it was like, oops, <laughs> a silent video. <laughs> like the olden days. <laughs> so anyway, this is the second part of uh, service animals because it's, it's pretty wide and I'll insert some things that I know from my experience of using a service animal. All right. So, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I think we did examples of uh, service animals tasks already in the other one. Uh, I wanted to start out uh, with where service animals can go, and then we'll go where they can't go. <laughs> so, all right, where service animals can go. Service animals in general can go wherever the public goes, okay? But they wanted to give some examples, the ADA, uh, for us to, you know, have, have a guide. So it says restaurants, shops, hospitals, schools, hotels, and I would say, you know, food stores or, you know, pick and save or save and pick or, you know, <laughs> a farmer's market, you know, wherever the public can go, your service animal can go. Uh, now, some, some managers or whatever might say to you or jump in and say, no, because there's food here and we have, you know, rules and regulations and that's, that's true, but there's an exception with service dogs. So um, you have to be very well educated. If you're going to have a service dog, you have to be educated on the ADA so that you can respond to people who might jump a little bit seeing a service dog in a uh, store. So, so there we go. Example, a restaurant offers indoor and outdoor seating. A woman arrives at the restaurant with her service dog and asks to sit inside. The restaurant cannot require the woman to dine outside because of her service dog. So that's really important to know. Uh, the ADA also applies to certain types of housing, including housing at public and private universities, public housing uh, programs run by the state, county, or city government, and emergency shelter. So if you end up in a, an emergency of some kind, uh, you know, and you need to go into a shelter, they can't uh, prohibit you from coming in with a service dog. Other laws uh, that will apply to housing. The Fair Housing Act applies to many types of housing, both public and privately owned, including housing covered by the ADA under the Fair Housing Act, there may be different rules that apply when a resident or applicant with a, with a disability uses a service animal or other animal to uh, assist with their disability. The, U the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development is responsible for administering the Fair Housing Act. So, uh, just so you know where you need to go for assistance or help or education. So other laws apply to airplanes. So listen up here. The Air Carrier Access Act, not the ADA, protects the rights of the people with disabilities in air travel, okay? So the ACAA is what applies to airplanes, not the ADA. For information or to file a complaint, contact the U.S. Department of Transportation Aviation Consumer Protection Division at 202-366-2220. And again, um, for information to file or to file a complaint, contact the U.S. Department of Transportation Aviation Consumer Protection Division at 202-366-2220. Other rules apply to employment. So there's a whole rules and regulations to that. So the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, the EEOC, is responsible for administering the ADA, 
in employment settings. So um, there are people who just say, no, you can't come in with that service dog. No, we can't hire you because of the service dog. So, you know, and on and on. So you have to know the law in order to be able to respond back to an employer or to a job that you're looking at. Asking if a dog is a service animal, and this is important, um, there are only two questions they can ask. Uh, is, the, is, is the dog a service animal required because of a disability? There's only two answers, yes or no. The second question is, what work or task has the dog been trained to perform? So either picking up things, or if it's a hearing dog, to alert you of certain sounds, or, you know, and they might say, oh, we have a lot of people here in the office, so they can alert you of whatever. It's like, no. <laughs> I use a service animal, and the service dog will alert me. I don't want to depend on people, so... So you have that right. Um, you know, is the dog a service animal required because of a disability? There's only two answers on that one. What work or tasks? You know, so that, that's really important. Either it's a guide dog or a dog that will help you with mobility or picking things up for you or whatever the task the dog was trained to do. You are not allowed to request any documentation. So the employer or the restaurant or the supermarket cannot request any documentation that the dog is registered, licensed, or certified as a service animal. There is no license, there is no certification at this time for service dogs. Require, they cannot also require that the dog demonstrate its tasks or inquire about the nature of the person's disability. So this is where, you know, owners get into uh, a tizzy because they're very limited. They can only ask two questions and they have to be satisfied with the answer. They can't go any further than that. They can't ask you about your disability and details of the disability unless you want to share. And that's, that's on you, so, um, so that's that. When a service animal can be kept out. Now, there's a couple of places where a service dog would not be allowed. And uh, I think I talked about this a little bit in the previous video. Uh, one is a zoo. And um, that is because of predators. Uh, they have lions and tigers and panthers and they have, you know, the usual zoo type animals. Um, and that a service dog being present could upset the uh, predator and uh, try to attack or, you know, do something um, because they see your service dog as um, a snack, <laughs> you know. So, and we've already talked a little bit about uh, this. So uh, let me see. So there is a link in there that you can uh, learn more about where a service dog cannot go. Uh, another, another place that a service dog should not be, or you'd have to be very, extremely very careful, is where, you know, there might be a national park or a federal park you want to go to, but it has, you know, it has mountain lions and it has uh, bears and it has, you know, predator type animals, the park will warn you. Either say, no, you cannot bring that service dog here because you're putting your dog and yourself in danger. So, uh, and we don't want that. So, uh, that would be another place where the service dog will not be allowed to go to. Now, there are parks where there are no predators. So, um, and, and that would be good. So, um, and that would be okay to bring your service service dog uh, with you where there are no large predators. So, so you have to be aware of that. Asking someone to remove their service animal. <laughs> okay, this is a good one. A business or state local government can ask someone to remove their service animal if the dog is not housebroken. So if, if your service dog 
you know, behaves well at home but can't behave well in public, then then you're you're in uh, a problem here. So the service dog has to be housebroken. But if it is not housebroken, then they won't let them in. The dog is out of control. So if you can't get the dog out of control, uh, under control, you know they're barking, they're jumping, they're pulling, they're sleeping in the middle of the of the aisle, whatever it might be. Um, you know that that the dog is growling at people, barking at people. Then you can be asked to to leave with the service dog. So. State and local laws. State and local governments can require service dogs to be licensed and vaccinated if all dogs are required to be licensed and vaccinated. So obviously, <laughs> your service dog has to comply with, with the rules and laws of the state and local government. Uh, offer voluntary service, uh, service dog registration programs. Um, you know, and there is... I registered my service dog. I did because I wanted him to look professional. I wanted someone, if they're so desperate to figure it out, they can go to XYZ. Um, I think it was a national registry for service dogs. I think that was what it was called. But I will look for the link, and you can voluntary, voluntarily register your service dog. So if somebody really wants to look it up, then it's right there in black and white. So... It doesn't mean that someone who has a pet who is not a service dog could also register their animal, but that's a lie, and um, that puts them in, in, in a bad position. So, yes, you can register your service dog. It's not required, okay? So it's important for you to know. So states, state and local governments cannot require certification or registration of a service dog or ban a service dog based on its breed. Service dogs come in all shapes and forms and all kinds of breeds, so it doesn't necessarily have to be the Lab or the Golden. Uh, it can be, you know, a Great Dane. You know, I've seen Great Danes as service dogs um, because they use them a lot for balance when people have problems with balance. Um, I've seen German Shepherds, I've seen mixed breeds do a great job as uh, service dogs. To learn more about the ADA and service animals, there's a, a whole bunch of links there. So I think that this um, finishes up, you know, the service dogs um, video. I think if you know if you run into trouble, first of all, you need to educate yourself on the ADA well enough to be able to answer back, you know, any issues, and for you to be polite about it, and um, professional about how you answer those issues. Because some people, especially, I find it, you know, as foreigners or someone who is, you know, from a different faith. Uh, they just don't like dogs or feel like dogs are just not appropriate in their venue. Um, you know, so then if you respond professionally and respectfully and they still are saying, I don't care about service dogs, you're not coming in, then you can call the local police, you know, for them to come in and to help with uh, the issues. Because they might, this person might not be familiar with the ADA at all. They might not be familiar with service dogs at all because they come from a different country. And so some education has to be there. If they don't want to listen to you, then, you know, I used to bring a card of the ADA and um, it just had some points on there. And I would give them that card uh, just in case. Um, but um, yeah. So if you have a problem, know that the police, you can call the non-emergency number for them to come over and help you with that dialogue and to educate the owner about the um, ADA. So I'm hoping that this is uh, helpful. Um, if you have any questions or any examples you want to give of your experiences having a service dog, uh, please feel free to post your questions down below or share your experiences and this will help other people as well. So if you're thinking of having a service dog, you know, that's a whole different video. <laughs> so 
uh, that will be chapter three or segment three of uh, service dogs because also here we're talking about the service dog and their rights and your rights. However, if you're thinking of having a service dog, then there's a whole questionnaire that agencies give you, you know, if you're, if you're gonna go through an agency. And again, I strongly recommend that anyone who wants a service dog, that you go through an agency. Yes, you can train your own dog, but if, if you're not quite, you know, in the game of training a service dog, then I would suggest you go through an agency that is, you know, has a good foundation, has been doing it for, for many years, and has been very successful in training service dogs. Do all service dogs make it through the training? No, they don't. Uh, and we'll go into that in the next video. Um, and then there's an evaluation that happens with you because you have to have everything that you need to be able to, to be the best owner and support for that service dog. So we'll, we'll do that in a, in a separate video uh, because that is, is pretty long. So, all right. So that is part two. And I'm hoping that this video was of good help to you. And if you still have questions, well, uh, let us know.